Anything I can say is for right now, we're going to let it the way it is and see how it goes, and we'll make adjustments as we see fit. We're trying to get a schedule worked out for the children's messages. If you're, if anybody's interested in doing this, whether all the time or just once in a while, please let either Cheryl or myself know. Um, we can accommodate anything. <laughs> right. So, and that's it's a great opportunity. Um, I myself have filled in a couple times, so that's a lot of fun, <clears throat> and we get to see lots of faces. Anything else that I need to be aware?
Heavenly Father, we are just humbled to be here in your presence today, Lord. And although there is shifting sand all around us, whether inside this church or outside of this church, Lord, we know your spirit is present. We know you're here. We know that your son has continued to provide salvation on a day-to-day -day basis for all of our ears. So, Heavenly Father, we're just honored and humbled for this new beginning, for this new day, for this time of worship to come before you, to celebrate, and to honor all that you were doing. So, Heavenly Father, just be in this time, be in this place, be in our hearts. For we need you. We need to hear you, and we see you all around us. In your name, we humbly pray. Amen. Amen. So, take a moment and greet those around you. Great to see you, brother. It's so good to see you guys. Today is a new day, uh, and so I am honored and humbled to bring Pastor Darrell up here. Uh, we are going to do the United Methodist Liturgy for affirmation of appointment. Um, 
And so this is new for all of us. And we have the congregation response when the time comes. It is a little tiny, and I apologize, but I wanted to make sure that everybody at least had it. Um, you will know when that time comes. But if Pastor Carl can come up here. Dear friends, today we welcome Pastor Darl, who has been appointed to serve as our pastor. We believe that he is well qualified and has been prayerfully appointed by our Bishop Cynthia. Darl, you have been sent to live among us as a bearer of the word of God, a minister of sacraments, and a sustainer of the love, order, discipleship of the people of God. Darl. You are to represent the ministry of servanthood and to equip all Christians to be in ministry and in service to the community. Today I reaffirm this commitment in the presence of this congregation. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as a people committed to participate in the ministries of the church, by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness, will you, who celebrate this beginning, support and uphold Pastor Darrell in these ministries? How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of a messenger. I'm going to do one of the prayers that's in here, and then we're going to take a moment and anoint Pastor. Um, if anybody would like to join us in that, then you can come forward at that point in time. Let us pray. Eternal God, strengthen and sustain us as the ministries together, with Darl as our pastor, and give him and us patience, courage, and wisdom, so that we care for one another and challenge one another, that together we may follow Jesus Christ living together in love, and offering our gifts and talents in your service, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If anyone would like to join, please uh, come forward. This is a first for me. Need to descend your spirit upon this church, upon Darrell, as our leader, as your shepherd. Lord, help us to faithfully follow him as he faithfully presents your word to this church. Lord, lead each of us through him and through one another into more presence with you, more service to this community, more love, more grace, more understanding. Lord, in these times that are inside of these walls and outside of these walls, Lord, we are just asking that you have brought forth Darl in this point in time to be our shepherd, our guide, our leader, and a faithful messenger of your word to us. So, Lord, please put a hedge of protection around him and this church as we move forward in this time, as we move forward in your will, in your grace, and in your goodness. In your name we humbly pray.
Many thanks, Oliver. expected it folks never expected it that's for sure hey um before i get into this i do know one thing and it is uh it is on the front of our fold god is good all the time all the time god is good. amen <laughs> let it be so yes yeah um let let us start out with uh with with any joys and concerns we may have um are there any joys that anyone would love to share? <coughs> Go ahead. Awesome. That is a great joy. Thank you for that. Very nice. Very nice. She said, for being here today, giving us a chance to work. Yeah. 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 And, and, I, and I second that opinion. You know, it is great to be here. It is great. Any other joys? Any other joys? What's that? Yeah, yeah, great, great, yeah. Good to see you all. Good to see you all. Go ahead. I got back You did. What camp did you go to? Awesome, awesome. And you had fun? Yeah. Gonna do it again? Yeah. <laughs> but you had a good time. That's good. That's good. She had a great time at camp. Just got home. Go ahead, Karen. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's good to be with family. And, and and it's good to be back with family also. So it is. Yeah, go ahead, Tim. Well, a lot of you guys know in November of last year my brother was in a motorcycle accident, lost his leg. Um, after what is it, seven months, almost eight months, we got the honor yesterday to go over to Unlimited Cycle Center with him and buy a new trike. There you go. But not only did he get a, a new leg, but he also bought a new bike. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty much something to follow him know what he's been through for the past eight months sure. to see that he got back on his ride again. And thank God for new beginnings, right? Yeah. 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 Go ahead, Marlon. Hey. My joy is we're out, we're going to Grand Camp next week. There you go. There you go. <laughs> we'll find out next time we see you. <laughs> yeah, good. Go ahead. Uh, we get to spend next week uh, with our entire family, all our grandkids and our son, not two sons and daughter. Hopefully, it'll be a joyous week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grand camp at home, right? Good, good. I have praises and just lots of fun. Um, my kids both worked last week at camp, and it was exciting. Luke's there all summer. But Kieran just made a special appearance as a counselor. Yeah. And I love hearing all the stories and hearing about everyone and just seeing the changes in Luke. It, he was a CIT last year, but seeing him in his element this year, he's barely coming home on the weekends because yeah. he's just having so much fun. So yeah. it's cool to see. Um, and another fun thing is we took the camper to camp this weekend and after two stops, two blown tires, and seven hours for a two-hour trip, the camper is there. So just tons of blessings that my husband and my uncle were able to handle it all. Yeah. Yeah. We made it. Yeah. That's good that you can see the blessings through the struggles. You know what? After, after seven hours, we're yeah. just like, all right, we're there. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Are there any others you care to share? Go ahead. It is a blessing to me to see you in that fall. Well, thank you very much. I thank God for your wife and your daughter. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Are there any others? Go ahead. Yes, he did, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that bless this country. We should be thankful. We, as, as screwed up as we may think it is, it's still the best thing going out there. <laughs> so it is. So far, yeah. <laughs> I heard that. That's yeah, good. Are there any others? Good. How about some concerns? Are there any concerns? Go ahead. Continued prayers for my brother in law, Bob Salada. He's coming along. another prayer for I know it's going to sound weird. We have a huge pine tree in the middle of our yard. And we're praying that we can save it. But the other day when we had that bad storm, lightning hit our tree. Oh. And I mean it knocked the birdhouse down and yeah. the tree just we're looking it's not split. Yeah. It's a it's a huge And I know going off, piggybacking off of you, um, Lori has a coworker and, and friend, and her name is Jen, and she also is young. And um, she also is battling breast cancer. She went through the chemo treatment, started radiation treatments. <coughs> they, they found a little bit now in her lymph nodes, so she had to discontinue her radiation. Um, I know this church is a praying church, so would you pray for Jen and Mike as they, as they struggle through this? But Rebecca, I'm sorry. I got so many Beckys and Rebecca's and, and that in my life. If I, I know you're Rebecca, if I call you Becky, please forgive me. I'm asking for forgiveness right off the bat. <laughs> um, so we have new neighbors. They were um, in the service, so they moved around. Um, our, they were stationed in Durham, and she had a really good friend there. Um, her and her husband were I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. 
Sharon. Strange as this may sound, um, we need to pray for men like Putin. I'm sorry, if he's going to change, obviously we're not able to do it, but our God is. You know? So we need to also lift him in prayer and all like him. So, are there any others? How about unspoken? Bring your joys, bring your concerns, please. things we are thankful for, so many blessings that you have truly given to us. Lord, I pray that we not take those blessings for granted, <coughs> and I pray that we remain appreciative of them throughout our days. Lord, we, we, we've heard many, many blessings here today. They, they range from, from our worship, for how great is that? given us this time together. We talk about reunions, families coming to visit. We talk about camp and how great it is, whether you're, whether you're a camper or a counselor, how great it is, Lord. Lord, we spoke of rehabilitations and, and new beginnings. And Lord, it's all because of you that we're able to do these things. I just pray that we recognize you and give you all the glory and honor that you deserve. And Lord, we've, we've heard also so many concerns and we ask you to hear our prayers at this time as we lift them. Whether we lift, it, lift them publicly or silently, Lord, we know that you hear them because you know our heart. And we lift them to you at this time, Lord. We lift the, the cancers. We lift, we're lifting our country. We're, we're lifting the leaders of other countries. We're lifting our youth. Because our countries and our worship services are going to be handed down to them next. May we teach them your way and how to follow you, Lord. Lord Jesus, it's at this time that I would like to pray that we uh, are able to live the prayer, not just recite the prayer, but to live the prayer. Put this prayer into actions, into our daily lives, and it's the prayer that you taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the night is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. 
So it was brought to my attention that I skipped a hymn. <laughs> if that is my biggest screw up for the day, I am very pleased. <laughs> um, would we like to sing that hymn right now? What's that? I'll, we'll do the first and the last. How's that? I don't know even what it is here. Go ahead and Continue to bless them. May we take these gifts from this church and use them throughout the community. Use them by spreading your word to others. Lord, place, place those people in our paths. Place those communities in our way. And may, may, may we recognize who we need to serve. May we be the best stewards that we can be of the gifts that you give to us. For we know that you gave all. You gave all you had for us. And may we be able and willing, joyously, to give back to you. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Anybody think it's hot in here? <laughs> 
<laughs> kind of makes you glad you're not going to hell, right? <laughs> Touche. Touche. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got a confession to make. When we came in here, it was almost 80 degrees. The, uh, the, the AC was not on. Um, Karen looked at it and said she doesn't know. I said, well, I'll look at it. <laughs> so whoever runs this AC, um, you may have to make some more adjustments up here because it did not kick on automatically today, and I don't know what I'm doing with it. So um, please feel free to come on up and, <laughs> and, and adjust anything you feel that you need to do. <laughs> Could we bow our heads in prayer, please? <clears throat> I'm sorry. Hold on a minute. I'm you got to put me straight for you know, I'm, I'm going to go. It, 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 oh, yeah, this is going to take a village, folks. Oh, more than you, though. Well, <laughs> well it's going to take two. Don't let you off. <laughs> I'm sorry. Folks, when I'm, when I'm messing up up here, please, please say, hey, we've got to do the children's sermon next. Yes, so, who is. <laughs> Children, come on over or up. I'm going up anyway. I don't care. Tell me I wasn't one of the kids. Uh, we're all kids. <laughs> exactly. We can all set up here if you'd like. We have to work on the inner self sometimes. That's right. Well, once again, it's a holiday weekend. Yay. And... I'm very patriotic. I do believe that our country is the best in the world. I love it. And so I thought it only fair if I looked up the history, not my favorite. But I'll give you some facts, okay? Number one, we call it the 4th of July, but it's also called Independence Day. And in the beginning, they, they couldn't even agree on what day it was because their system of getting together was not as easy as our, we have it now. And it started out that the Congress voted for this independence on the 2nd. So people thought it should have been on July 2nd. But a couple of the people signed it on the 4th, and then more signed it in, in August. They finally said, 4th of July it is. So that's, the, that's how it started, OK? Total confusion makes it make sense. Now this fact I thought was great. Do you know that it's estimated, now they said, on the, four, on the actual fourth, but it might have been a combination of like yesterday's picnic space and tomorrow's. 150 million hot dogs are gonna be eaten. <laughs> I thought that was an impressive number. <laughs> Did you know that three presidents have died on July 4th? Two of them the same day, one five years later, and then later on, another president was actually born on the fourth. Oh, this is just getting me nowhere. John Adams, who, if you talked to my grandfather, he would have told you that our ancestors were cousins with John Adams, because I'm an Adams, was, am, always will be. Um, he was irritated. Apparently, he was stubborn, which that's so unusual for Adamses. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that he felt that July 2nd should have been the real day? So for the rest of his life, he refused to go anywhere and celebrate anything on July 4th. Talk about holding a grudge. Jeez. Okay. They, do you know that the celebration, there was some question too. Some of the people who signed that, that first declaration felt that we should make it a very solemn time. But people were already out there with fireworks. So, you know, it is how it is. And Macy's sets off 75,000 uh, fireworks for the 4th of July. It's about $6 million worth. And this one I thought was kind of cool. Descendants of the people who actually signed the declaration go to, to Philadelphia every year. And you've heard of the Liberty Bell, right? They tap it 13 times for the 13 colonies every 4th of July. Enough of the facts. I can't handle too much more history. That's enough for me, okay? 
So, when I, I got caught back at the very beginning when they called Independence Day. Because I look at five and I think, were there any Independence Days back then? Independence Day was when our country actually became a country. We were no longer under the rule of England. Did you ever hear about the Moses leading all the Israelites? For 400 years, they were slaves. Should that have been an Independence Day? Maybe. And then I was thinking about something else. How about the day that you accepted Jesus into your heart? Do you think that's your Independence Day from sin? Not that you'll never sin again, you know. Oh, still sin. That John Adams, you, uh, the stubbornness is there. But what happens is Jesus says, I don't care. I've already defeated Satan. So every time he pushes sin into your life, you can be free of it because he is our independence. Jesus has brought us independence. We all have our own personal independence days. How's that? Pretty deep, huh? You didn't have to look that one up in, in any kind of a book or on the internet or anything. I just think that it's pretty important because Satan is never going to give up trying to push that sin into our life. But Jesus is there for us always. He's there to protect you, okay? Now, I forgot to bring my Bible. It's a good thing I wrote down the Bible every verse, huh? <laughs> Okay, in John 8, 36, it says, So if the Son sets you free from sin, you are free indeed. If you have any idea. Right, would you pray with me, please? Our dear Heavenly Father, oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for our country. We thank you for all the great things that are here. Not perfect, but that we have the, in, the freedom to to worship you, to be here this morning and not worry about somebody trying to kill us just because we're here. I thank you, Lord, for all these little people that are here. I thank you for the big ones that brought them. And I thank you, Lord, for that son that gave us each our own individual independence day. Please, Lord, just keep watching over us through the holiday and people traveling and, and, and sometimes playing with fireworks. Lord, just kind of save us from ourselves and from Satan. In Jesus' name we pray. No flying flaggers in church. <laughs> Pastor D might not appreciate uh, this. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd like to have one of those. <laughs> Tough to put this together and talk at the same time. <laughs>
What ships? What ships do Christians like most? Anyone? Yeah, worship and discipleship. Worship and discipleship. Mount Olive UMC, how honored we are to serve thee. And no, I am not going to start rapping or rhyming. <laughs> so I but I, I first want to warn you, and you heard that word just now, Yoins. Yes, I speak Pittsburgh East, Western Pennsylvania lingo, okay? Um, I spent my entire life in Western Pennsylvania. That's inbred into me. I am over a half a century year old. Um, I am not going to break the habit of that. I hope Yuns can adjust to that. <laughs> now you men, you men may have known this already, um, if you've ever attended any of our men's gathering, and, and maybe you heard whenever Fondo, Tom Fondelier, uh, maybe you heard him tell you a great and wonderful story about my jokes. If you remember when he opened up his devotion, he said that, uh, he, he told you how funny my jokes are, and that they brighten up his day every day, and they just make him laugh and laugh and laugh for hours. Huh? You remember when he said that? Yeah, no, you don't remember that, because that's a lie. <laughs> that's a lie. What he actually said, and I quote, uh, what he actually said was, keeping in step with our pastor and his joke-telling skills, I'd like to begin this devotion by sharing a terrible joke with you. <laughs> That's how he opened up the devotions. But I gotta tell you, Ashley, it really doesn't bother me if my jokes don't get a good response. And did you just hear what I just did? I just used the double negative for all you people. And they, they come out every now and then too. So actually, it really doesn't bother me if my jokes receive a poor response, if that's better for you folks. Um, because, you know what? The scriptures, they always rescue me. So they do. They always rescue me. i got to tell you, it is truly an honor to begin the next part of our ministry here at Mount Olive. I, I never dreamed we would come back home. I never dreamed we'd come back home. I never thought it possible that we would be given this opportunity to come back to the church family that helped raise us up in Christ. And then, like all good parents do, once you're mature enough, <laughs> they ask you to leave the nest. <laughs> yeah. 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 But we left the Mount Olive nest eight years ago in 2014, never dreaming, folks, that we would be asked to come back to serve in ministry with you and Saul. Yeah. How blessed, honestly. How blessed we feel, you know? Jim, at the last men's gathering, you said that uh, Pastor Thomas walked beside you hand in hand, and that you would be willing to walk alongside me now since Pastor Tom has retired. I thank you so much for that great compliment. I do. I, friend, friends, I know the task that lies ahead of us, and it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Satan is going to throw everything he can at our church and its ministries. He's going to throw everything he can to make us fail. So he will. But standing together in Scripture, hand in hand, Mount Olive will withstand the many tests that are about to come our way. Amen. Amen. I'd like for all you to know that... that we are going to walk through the Old Testament stories together. We're going to walk through the New Testament stories. We're going to, we're going to see how Moses gathered those animals two by twos and how he lived on that ark with Sarah, Lot, Cain, and Abel for over a year. Huh? Well, we'll climb the mountain with Noah and, and honor those 12 commandments those 10 disciples wrote about. We will. We're going to hear the story of how the waters of the Galilean Sea were parted in order for the Magi to cross so they could slew the giant Goliath. Yeah. And folks, I'm glad you caught on to all that. Because if that doesn't have you convinced to walk hand in hand with me, then we're going to seriously keep in step 
with God's actual work. So we will. Mount Olive has a very special place in the Penrod Council, and I heard you talk about it this morning. This young lady was uh, preschool age when we first came here. She is soon to be a junior in college and soon will be 21. Yes, yeah. Mount Olive has played a significant part in the creation of our grandchildren. Nittany and Oliver. Hmm? This is where this, this is where Katie and Travis met, and they are still writing chapters in their book. So they are. Mount Olive has a very significant place in our ministry. So it does. Each and every one of you has blessed us in one way or another. And even the people we haven't officially met, <laughs> Yuns may not know it, but Yuns are about to be a blessing to the journey that we are walking. So you are. One way or another, you will bless us. <laughs> so you will. Just like whenever you have troubles going to camp with a trailer and you get two flat tires, you are still blessed. There's going to be troubles. May we be blessed by those troubles. Jesus had troubles. And he was a blessing to all. So it was. Friends, along this walk, there are going to be moments that we walk stride for stride with one another. And we see things eye to eye. But there's also going to be times when we may disagree with one another. And, and when, 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 when we come to these moments... My hope is that we can agree to disagree with each other, but we still act like sisters, Christian sisters and brothers, to one another. That's my prayer for us. When I emailed the bulletin information to Karen, um, I kind of told her that I am an understudy, so to speak, of Pastor Tom. And I am a believer of Nehemiah 8-5 that, that states... And I, I, I'm reading from Nehemiah 8, 5. All the people saw Ezra open the book, for he was standing above them. And all the people stood up when he opened it. Such respect was given to the word of God that they literally stood for six hours. Yeah, I'm not asking you to do that. It may feel like it at times, but I'm not asking that. They stood for six hours while read, Ezra read the word of God to them. And I, I just want to make one thing clear here, okay? Please, please understand this. If, if it is uncomfortable, even though we will stand, if it is uncomfortable for you to stand, please, please feel comfortable enough to sit. And stand with us then in spirit. For anything, not just when we read the scriptures. If, if you're uncomfortable to stand, stand with us in spirit then, okay? Please do that. But we are about to read from 2 Timothy and... 2 Timothy is Paul's last letter written to Timothy. In this letter, Paul indicates that he knows that Timothy will no longer be around, and he wanted to encourage Timothy, his understudy, and his ministry. Paul knew that Timothy was struggling and, and having health problems. Paul knew that people were having doubts about Timothy, and, and they began to write him off. This letter from Paul was meant to encourage Timothy to step up to the plate, it was, it was meant to encourage to take his ministry serious and to see his ministry as a long-term commitment. Timothy needed to have the right point of view when he met the challenges, when he met the stresses, the demands, and the disappointments of ministry. They do come along, folks. Since Paul... Since Paul has been through many trials because of his own ministry for Christ, he was encouraging Timothy to keep in step with Christ. Fight the good fight. To finish the race. Paul didn't throw in the towel when things got rough. He didn't. He didn't throw in the towel, so to speak, when things got rough. He fought the battle because he knew who he had in his corner. He knew it. He knew that the battle that he fought was not for Paul, 
The battle he fought was for Christ the Lord. And he wanted Timothy to do the same. I'm going back to those guys here. If you remember at our last men's gathering, I compared Pastor Tom and I to Paul and Timothy. And please don't hear what I'm not saying. Okay? All I was saying is Pastor Tom was a great mentor and encourager like Paul and I, Timothy. His understanding. But not only did Paul want Timothy's ministry to be successful, just as I know Pastor Tom wants this ministry to be successful, Paul wanted Timothy to pass the good news of Christ onto those coming behind him in ministry. So he did. Paul gives Timothy and each of us the best reason of all for living out a faith filled life for Christ. And that is so we can receive the crown of righteousness from the Lord himself. Friends, that crown of righteousness, that crown of righteousness is available to all believers who faithfully serve the Lord Jesus Christ. In the scripture we're about to read, we're going to see Paul warn Timothy of the troubles that await him. But they don't just wait on Timothy, but all believers everywhere and in any time period. Paul tells Timothy to stand strong in faith and to love as Christ loves. He then tells him to possess patience, endurance, and conduct yourself in a godly manner, even when it is hard to do. Through all of Paul's persecutions, he was able to remain devoted to God and the believers. Paul wanted Timothy to keep in step with the teachings of God's word, even when the times got rough. If there was anyone who ever knew about rough times because of Christ in your life, it was Paul. It was Paul. If there was anyone who knew that what it was like to be persecuted because of the word of God, it was the Apostle Paul. Paul wants Timothy to know that he is not alone in his struggles. And that Paul has been through a lot worse than he was. Paul was willing to testify to the sustaining grace of God. No matter what. Now I'm going to ask you if, that if you are comfortable enough to stand, would you please stand as we give reverence to God's holy word. And as I said, if it's more comfortable to sit, please remain seated. But our reading comes from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 to 6. <clears throat> and this may be something new to you guys, but I am reading from the NLV today. Okay, Beginning at verse 10. But you know what I teach and how I live. You know what I want to do. You know about my faith and my love. You know how long I am willing to wait for something. You know how I keep on working for God even when it is hard for me. You know about all the troubles and hard times I have had. You have seen how I suffered in the cities of Antioch and Iconium and Lystra. Yet the Lord brought me out of all those troubles. Yes, all who want to live a God-like life who belong to Christ Jesus, will suffer from others. I'm going to repeat that so that sinks into us a little bit. All who want to live a God-like life who belong to Christ Jesus will suffer from others. Now I know this doesn't sell like a, or sound like a good selling point for Christianity, but Paul isn't saying anything different than what Jesus did. Did Jesus not tell us there are going to be trials and persecutions? then that we will suffer because of him. Hmm? Yeah. See, if we, seek, if we seek to be a visible and verbal follower of Christ and give our obedience to, to God's agenda, we are bound to face serious opposition, folks, from the devil and the world. So we will. I'm at verse 13. Sinful men and false teachers will go from bad to worse. What? They're going to go from bad to worse. Hmm. 
They will lead others the wrong way and will be led the wrong way themselves. Any of that sound familiar to us today? I'm at verse 14. But as for you, hold on to what you have learned and know to be true. Remember where you learned them. You have known the holy writings since you were a child. They are able to give you wisdom that leads to being saved from the punishment of sin by putting your trust in Christ Jesus. See, Paul wanted Timothy. He wants us to know that because of the truth of the scriptures, and he and we have the wisdom for salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ when we have faith. Verse 16. All the holy writings, all scriptures, are God-given and are made alive by him. Friends, this means that when we read the Bible, we're reading the very words of the living God himself. It, the, the verse ends, man is helped when he is taught God's word. It shows what is wrong. It changes the way a person, a person lives. It shows a person how to be right with God. You may be seated. Friends, these verses that we just read tell me to keep in step with the Lord's teachings. Last week, Pastor Tom read from Joshua 24, and the last verse that he read was verse 15. And it tells us that if you think it is wrong to serve the Lord, you are free to choose today whom you will serve. The verse ends by Joshua saying, but as for me and my house, yeah, yeah, you know the rest. We will serve the Lord. Just like Joshua couldn't, he could not control the hearts of the Israelites. I, I cannot, nor would I want to, control your heart and your thoughts. I can't even control my own wife's thoughts and her thoughts. I would not try to control yours. <laughs> but seriously, I do want each of you to know right from the very beginning of this ministry, okay? I'm laying it all out there right now. Whose agenda me and my house is going to follow? I plan on keeping in step with God's holy word. Okay? Understand that. I plan on keeping in step with God's holy word. It will not matter to me how the carnal world tells me that I must live. It will not matter to me if the secular world tells me that I must accept all kinds of sin as normal. If the things I must accept by the world's standards goes against God's holy word, then I'm going to be found guilty. So I will. For I will do my best. I will do my best to keep in step with God's holy word. This life, this life that we have been given, friends, it only comes around once. And to live outside of God's holy word and with some of the things that are happening in society today, if I would tell my daughter that it is okay to do certain things, and I know that in the Bible they are not okay to do, I am basically calling God a liar. So I am. And I do not want to do that. I want to keep in step with God's holy word. And it's tough, folks. It's tough to do at times. But we don't get a second chance. We don't get a second chance of this. This is the only one time around. This is it. Last week on the radio, Tony Evans said that life is like a coin. You can only spend it once. My friends, as we go through life, I pray that each of us keep in step with God's holy word. May God bless you all for what is about to come your way. Stand as we sing our closing hymn, My Hope is Built. We'll sing the first and the last verse on that.
You know, I get to see this young lady whenever we get, uh, our family comes from, well, they're in Germany now. So I get to see her when Nittany comes. She tends to stay over our house and they hang out together, you know. But I can remember, I can remember when you first had her. This girl's getting tall. <laughs> She's growing up. She's growing up. See, this is why we want to keep in step with God's holy word. Amen. Yeah, amen. We, we need to show the next generation coming up. Because if you haven't noticed, there's a lot fighting against them right now. And if we don't stand for God and his word, no one else is. That's for sure. I know we do the, you, you usually do the Mizpah, correct? Um, could you help me out with that? As, as, as we are about to uh, disassemble for the week. Friends, go into grace and the love of Jesus the Christ. Go and serve him well. Remember, this isn't the only place we worship. But we worship wherever we go. This is a place we come to get rejuvenated for worship. God bless you all. Until we meet again. Amen. Mm -hmm.